Welcome back to the fifth of six videos here in the Four Real Movie Club as we do Marvel Phase One. In this video, we'll be talking about Captain America: The First Avenger. Sam, we'll start with you. What were your initial thoughts on Captain America? My initial thoughts were: I understand why you're making a Captain America movie, but I still don't understand why you're making a Captain America movie. Like. I, some of the promotional images they had, I thought, wow, this is going to be like a World War II documentary, but it just so happens to be Captain America. I didn't exactly get that. This is a good movie. I actually like this movie more than Thor overall, but I felt disjointed a little bit between what I thought I was going to get and what I actually got. So those were just my initial reactions. <laughs> Eddie, what was your initial reactions on Captain America? Uh, yeah, I remember when this first came out. Uh, a couple of friends of mine went to go watch it. And they're like, "Hey, you want to go watch it?" I was like, "No," because I'm like, "Who gives a damn?" You know. So maybe a year later, I just I got kind of curious. I was like, "You know what? I heard a lot of good stuff about this movie, so I'll just watch it." And I did, and dude, it was really cool. Uh, there's something about the, I don't know, there's something that appeals to me in the 1940s and, and the fact that you're putting a superhero in that time frame is just, it's, it's, it, it makes me, it makes me believe it a little more. I don't know, it's just, there's, there's something like, wow, you know, this could have happened maybe in a certain way. Uh, because it didn't go overboard with the whole science aspect again, once again. Um, but, you know, I like, I like that mythology, you know, there's, there's still a lot of mysteries there regarding the Nazis, that they had their own religion and that kind of stuff. So it's interesting to explore that kind of, um, that kind of lore, if you will. I, I, I like it overall. Tony, what were your initial thoughts on Captain America? First Avenger is nowhere near as good as Winter Soldier. There's a complete, total opposite, you know, polar uh, change between the two of them. There's some flaws behind it, and it's kind of the same as Incredible Hulk, where they had a lot of good ideas, but they had some poor execution of those ideas, and that ends up making this nowhere near as good as it should have been. But it's an entertaining enough movie that you can sit through, and you can watch it, and you can have fun, and whatever. When you start analyzing it, that's when you come across problems, and uh, we'll get into some of those a little bit later. But in general, Captain America is a movie that could have failed miserably, and it didn't. Sam, what were your thoughts on the casting for Captain America First Avenger? Um, I was a little surprised when I heard the Human Torch was going to be Captain America. But having seen the movie and the sequels and Avengers, I love Chris Evans as Captain America. I think he was a great casting. I'm sure you could have found another actor who would have been just as good. Maybe even better. But I think for what they gave us, great casting. Uh, Haley Atwell as Peggy Carter, another great casting choice. I don't know if Tommy Lee Jones was right for Phillips. I just felt like I was watching Tommy Lee Jones, which wasn't a bad thing. I love Tommy Lee Jones. But he was more or less playing himself in the 40s than actually playing what I thought would have been Colonel Phillips. Um, Sebastian Stan was a really good choice if not for this movie, for them having the foresight to have him as the Winter Soldier. And the rest of the Howling Commandos, I mean, Dugan looked really cool. I honestly couldn't care less about the other ones, but Dugan was really cool. And uh, Howard Stark, seeing a young Howard, seeing how he compares to his son 70 years from now, getting to see, like, you can see the man that he is and the man that he will be having known Steve Rogers. It's not going to make him a good father by any means, but it's going to... I think this movie showed us where Howard's sense of purpose came from, having just been, like, another inventor to the captain of industry that he ended up becoming. And I, I can't end this without mentioning um, Red Skull. I'm so sorry that we don't get to see him anymore. It was a great portrayal. I'm sorry that the makeup 
hurt the guy so much and made it so uncomfortable that he never wanted to do it again. But oh my god, I I good villain with a true sense of danger to our hero, which we didn't get with like Iron Man two. Like this actually felt like Rogers could lose, and in a way he does, and that's why I really like this movie. Eddie, what were your thoughts on the casting? Uh, yeah, same as Sam, and I guess the same as anyone else. I was like, what the hell? Isn't that guy the Human Torch? But, I mean, you kind of, you, you quickly forget that, because, I mean, he, the first thing you see is, like, first of all, awesome job in, um, in, uh, VFX, because you see the skinny little dweeb, like, like, wow. And, you know, I thought it was like, oh, man, did he do that whole, like, Christian Bale thing where he like he he drops like sixty pounds for a roll and then he bulked up all of a sudden, but no 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 it's just the effects and um and he he pulled it off I mean he acts like this like he wants to you know he he's proud he wants to serve his country and that whole kind of mentality that was going on back then and but at the same time he's like this you know he becomes Captain America super strong and bulky and everything and yet he's never even kissed a girl. You, know, you can see that when he's awkward waiting for uh, when he talks to uh, Howard Stark, and then uh, what's that girl's name? She's really hot. She plays. She plays. Um, uh, what she play in Game of Thrones? Um, oh, you're talking about the blonde girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Natalie. Dormer. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Natalie Dormer. I was like, oh yeah, she was in that movie. I forgot. And then, like. She, like he's just like oh no like I just I, I have to talk to yeah I'm just gonna wait here and he's all awkward and I was like that's that's good you know it's giving the character like three dimen- like three dimensions uh, as far as the rest yeah uh, there's just something that I thought was kind of weird people didn't really talk a modern English back in the 40s it was a lot it seems like every time I see some sort of recording from back then uh, people used to speak you know i don't know what it was a more urgent matter like hey there i thought Tommy lee jones is really swell as kind of chester phillips you know like it, it, people used to talk like that one way or another and i didn't really i, I don't i don't think they tried very hard with the with people's speeches maybe not to alienate anyone um but yeah i mean because i'm sure Tommy lee jones could have and the other actors could have handled that kind of talking, but uh, because of that, I just I was like, ah, Tommy Lee Jones is weak. Uh, okay, Haley Atwell's played a British, so that's fine. Sebastian Stan was fine. Dominic Cooper was great. I think he kind of kept that kind of like cool, like 1940s kind of swing going on. And uh, honorable mention to Hugo Weaving. Cause yeah, like he was just he like he demanded attention. He was like, my character is on screen, and my mere presence is gonna fuck your self esteem up. You know, like, well, this guy, you know, he he deserves a lot more than just being the bad guy. It's like, yeah, apparently we we won't see him anymore. From what you guys told me, I didn't even know that. I was like, well, maybe they'll they'll resurrect him or something, but no. Um, he was totally awesome, totally awesome, and um, it's probably you know what I think it's. I've seen him in a few movies, uh, about Matrix, uh, Lord of the Rings stuff, but this is definitely the best. That's it. So, uh, next question for uh, before we go into the next question, I got a few facts for everybody here. Uh, it was released shortly after Thor on July twenty second, two thousand eleven. With a runtime of 124 minutes, uh, the budget was 140 million dollars, and the box office brought in 370.6. So, when it comes to Captain America, we're going to go around the board real quick. Final thoughts, high point, low point, and ranking one to ten. Tony, we'll start with you. The bad parts about this film are the fact that they had to rush too many things. Uh, the romance between Peggy and Steve is just not as much there as what you would expect it to be. They really kind of just act like it is. I never felt that way. I don't see too much of a genuine love between the two. It's more so a couple of scenes of awkward flirtation, and that's it. 
So this strong bond, I never see it. And the same thing kind of happens with Red Skull and Captain America. Yeah, they've got the two of them going against each other, and they're clearly enemies and everything, but there's no strong foundation for a feud between the two. That's my issue with this film. Uh, by the way, quick side thing about the casting. The, everybody could have been... Um, Everybody was perfect for this role, except for I think they could have gotten somebody better for Peggy, and I think that there's a better Captain America out there, despite how great Chris Evans is. Um, there's no, like, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. Chris Hemsworth is Thor. Chris Evans is a good Captain America. He isn't the embodiment of it. So, um, but... You know, as much of a rush job as different parts of this movie is, uh, and that's the, the flaw of this whole thing, it's another situation where it's a fun film to watch in the grand scope of everything because you have lots of references to different things that are going to be paid off really well. You know, the crown jewel in Odin's chamber. Ah, Odin, he mentioned Thor. Like, you know, that kind of stuff is amazing. Uh, favorite parts, of course I liked the end scene because that was the setup for everything, and that was a great way to just go right into, now we're going to skip all the freezing stuff, we're going to go right into Cap is in the modern era, and I loved how he just ended it with, I had a date. Even though that doesn't have a strong love story behind it, that was a good nod to it. And overall, I'd have to go with this about like a six and a half. This is not, again, one of the stronger movies to watch, uh, if, if you're comparing it to Iron Man as sort of the benchmark but it's above something like an iron man 2 or an incredible hulk in some ways lower than something like a thor in different ways you know if somebody really really loves this movie i can see why if somebody has a problem with it i can see why too eddie what were your final thoughts high point low point and a ranking one to ten uh, I dug the movie. I just, I wish there, maybe they should have made it a little longer. Cause I mean, uh, I enjoyed the whole journey of, you know, of Steve Rogers being this kind of outcast and he, I mean, he's so frail that he ends up being some outcast. I mean, all his friends and all his buddies, every guy he knows is off fighting the war and he wants to help. And then, you know, you see, you see, you see him accidentally become this, hero and it's uh, it's kind of hilarious i mean he's kind of lost like hey what do i do where do i go and he's just he, he just turns into the circus monkey and uh but at the same time you see how that works in the 1940s i mean the pure propaganda back then you know buy the war bonds you know and then you will watch this you know show with captain america punching out hitler and it's you know there was there's a lot you know, there was a lot of that going on back then and it was it was an interesting portrayal of the period. Quite kind of accurate, actually. Um, and then all of a sudden, I got bored by the action scenes. I don't know why. I just it, I I didn't care at all for any of the explosions, the fighting, the laser guns, whatever they were. I didn't care at all. Um, but otherwise, I don't know. I'll see the high point. I, I I think Captain America himself. I mean, I think Steve. I think uh, Chris Evans was great. Uh, otherwise, and I, I like the I like the the whole like the that rugged technology. You know, the, his suit compared you know from the nineteen forties uh, to the new one. I love the that whole like um, contrast. And then low point. Yeah, the action scenes didn't do it for me, even when the Red Skull was involved. As great and menacing as he was, and I don't know, I didn't care for the action. Um, I'll give the movie a seven. It is entertaining, and I did like it overall. Um, a little more than Thor. So, there you have it. Sam, what were your high point, low point, final thoughts, and ranking one to ten? High point of the movie is probably going to be the fight between him and Red Skull on the big, I want to say helicarrier, but just the, the big ship at the end. The fight, the, not even banter, but like the real 
you can see the war of ideology in that final fight where you, the Red Skull says, you think you fight a war of nations and stuff like that. Like it, it's, it's more than that to the Red Skull. To Steve, this is just America fighting for the good fight, standing up for the little guy. And to the Red Skull, he just, he sees everything. He knows so much more. And that, the embodiment of the movie to me will be in that final scene. The low point for me is the montage, actually. The, the point of this movie, I felt, what you should have seen, they put in a 30 second to a minute montage of him and the Howling Commandos fighting off Hydra. The whole point, everything about Captain America fighting Hydra was brushed away real quick to show you a love story that was a little disjointed, to show you him interacting with a character here and there. I, I think you could have cut away and trimmed the fat a little bit to stretch out him and the commanders. Uh, my final thoughts just being, this was a really good introduction to Captain America. It was good to show us where things for Iron Man came from, where things for Thor came from, where we're going to see Steve go in his journey from that final scene. You know that he's going to be the man out of time now, where it, you no longer are going to know who the good guys and who the bad guys are. And it made it all the more interesting to see his character develop later on. I like this movie more than Thor, so since I gave Thor a 7 out of 10, I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. Well, there you have it, folks. That's Captain America. And I recognize the council has made a decision, but given that it was a stupid-ass decision, I've elected to ignore it that we only do four films. Moving on to the sixth and final film, we'll be going to the Avengers. So click to the next YouTube video, sit back, enjoy, and we're on our way in the 4 Real Movie Club. <laughs>